Welcome to this biochemistry lecture on DNA. So deoxyribonucleic acid is the molecule that you it is used in nature to carry, uh, carry genetic information, shortened for DNA. So all living organisms have it, and it not besides using it for genetic information, it's also used for energy storage and some signaling. DNA is made up of nucleotides, and these nucleotides, that these are the monomers of nucleotides. Each nucleotide is composed of four or three elements, and those are shown on the bottom. We have a sugar or a phosphate group. In the case of DNA, that would be deoxyribose. Uh, there's a phosphate group, and then there's a nitrogenous base. There are four nitrogenous bases that are unique to DNA, thymine, adenine, guanine, and cytosine. When we talk about RNA, we'll talk about uracil. But those are the, the major, the four components of DNA. Uh, they're very, very good hydrogen bond donors and acceptors, and that leads to the structure you see with DNA, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Again, there are is a phosphate, a ribose sugar, and then there's a nitrogenous base. The nitrogenous base comes in two forms, a, a pyrimidine ring and a purine ring. And uh, you will see these shown in the chart that was on the, pre uh, on the previous slide. Uh, the nitrogenous bases allow for certain interactions that are very, very important, including the absorption of UV light for biotechnology applications, as well as for base stacking interactions, which allows to help stabilize the structure. So these these uh, primidine and purine rings are become very very important structural element within DNA. So as you can see, uh, A, T, bi uh, hydrogen bond together, and G, C, hydrogen bond together. That gives us the complementary strand. So the structure of DNA is we have two strands of DNA that are complementary to each other, meaning, um, and they're read 5 prime to 3 prime. So up here you can see that there's a 5 prime end and it goes down to 3 prime. There's a complementary strand of DNA that goes from 3 prime to 5 prime. And so, and these base pairs interact and you have a double strand of DNA. There's hydrogen bonds that are formed. The AT hybrid uh, bonding has two hydrogen bonds, whereas the GC has three hydrogen bonds. So A binds with uh, pairs with T, C binds with G, basically purine pairs bind with a pyrimidine pair. That's the major important bond within DNA as far as the complementary strands go. There are base stacking interactions that exist and we'll talk about that in a minute. Again, DNA comes in complementary strands. There's two different strands and this is important for replication uh, and transcription. So when we, we do this, the complementary strands provide important opportunities for quick replication as well as proofreading and other uh, important other things that happen to DNA. The two chains are complementary. They run anti-parallel to each other, meaning it goes from 5' prime to 3' prime in one way and 3' prime to 5' prime in the other. Other important bonds are the N-glycosidic bond. We, and we have pretty free rotation around the N-glycosidic bond. That allows it to form the structure that you see. There are torsion angles, again, between all kinds of different, and there's free rotation between all these different uh, structures between the nitrogen, or between the um, phosphorus groups and between the ribose sugars. And so you have, you have about seven different bonds that'll have free rotation. You can imagine that allows it to form multiple different configurations. But there are um, ones that are more stable than others. So we'll, and we'll talk about those here in a little bit. But these, there are tons of free torsion angles that exist around these bonds, in particular the N-glycosidic bond. The N-glycosidic bond is the important bond that attaches the nitrogenous base to the ribose sugar.
You can see that that is bond number seven in this diagram. There are also base stacking interactions. Uh, as, you, as we noted earlier, there are pyrimidines that bind with purines. And as you can see in this, you will have interactions that occur along the alpha helices, which we'll talk about here in a minute, uh, that, that um, are stabilizing. And there are two stabilizing forces, primarily the hydrogen bonds and the base stacking bonds. The base stacking bonds are less discussed, but they're also as very, very important. So as these nucleotides um, complement each other, those base stacking interactions become very, very important. Another kind of an important thing that you'll note in this is when they have complementary strands, there is a major groove and a minor groove that kind of pop out. And the major groove is about 22 angstroms, and the minor groove is about 12 angstroms. The major groove provides easy access to DNA transcription factors that allow it to be regulated for gene expression. Again, so there's resonant structures within, and this is actually RNA resonant structure, but that applies to all nucleotides. The bonds between the ring structures that exist, either pyrimidine or purine rings, those rings, those resonant structures give it different looks at times. And so sometimes you'll see your cell denoted as lactam, sometimes you'll note it as a double lactam or a lactam. All you'll see all three forms that are shown. Um, that gives us several unique properties that we'll discuss a little in a little bit. So we've talked all about the bonds that exist within DNA, and we've been talking about the B form of DNA, which is the famously characterized form of the DNA by Watson and Crick, who won the Nobel Prize for that characterization. And we've been discussing how there's a phosphoester bond that exists between nucleotides. There's an glycosidic bond that links the ribose or deoxyribose to the nitrogenous base. We've talked about hydrogen bonds. We've talked about base stacking bonds. All those bonds come together to form this form, of, this form the B form of DNA. And the B form of DNA is also, we've been talking about anti-parallels and sequencing. There's a major groove and a minor groove. All of those things are possible because of the characterization of this B form of DNA. This is the form of DNA that's stable when you have water or DNA in an aqueous environment. And so you can see that there's 3.4 anxious between turns. There's approximately 3.6 turns per or nucleotides per turn, and this is the major form that you see that exists in nature. There are other forms. There's um, the A form and the Z form. The A form you will find when it's very dehydrated. Uh, the Z form is found in some very unique uh, organisms that are not really very prevalent. So again, the major form you're going to find is DNA. It's the most characterized. It's also the most important. You will see uh, DNA in the A form when it's in a dehydrated state. Here are the characteristics of the different forms of the structural forms of DNA. Uh, and so um, if you, this is a good reference tool for you if you're interested in finding out um, the properties of those different forms. Again, we mentioned earlier that the pyrimidine and purine structures absorb UV light. This is important for, new, for quantification of protein and other biotechnological applications. So we'll use this to determine protein quantification and whether DNA exists in a, in a sample and characterize it versus RNA and other forms of biopolymers. Um, so again, UV, uh, DNA absorbs UV light and it gives us this spectrum that we, again, can use to characterize things. Uh, DNA is denatured with heat. <clears throat> and there's a melting temperature called the TM that exists where half the sample has denatured. So, and this is a very, very simple way, a simple calculation. There's numerous programs out there that you can use online or formulas you can use online to in order to characterize the melting temperature of DNA. And so um, basically what happens is the DNA dehybridizes 
the A and T and the G and C bonds melt and the, the, you get single-stranded DNA. We will talk about this when we talk more about DNA technologies and some of the other applications. Thank you for listening. We look forward to seeing you in the next lecture on DNA technologies.